Hi, Abraham. Um, prior to discovering you, I had teachings, methods that promoted the absence of desire. And in that, I found a lot of peace in that as my desires came, I was able to let them go as well as let my fears go at the same time. And so in that space... Let us clarify something here. Because we said earlier that we want you to get your nose out of your business. And we're sort of talking about the same thing that you were discovering there. First, we want to say that when life causes you to launch a rocket, that is a relentless rocket. In other words, there's no regression. So once life has caused you to become more, you really have no choice if you're wanting to feel good other than to go in the direction of the more that you have already vibrationally become. So you cannot hold your desires back they are just vibrational reality that is going to call you but there is something that sometimes people do when they think that they're focused upon their desire when really they're focused in opposition to it and so by taking your attention from it so that you're not beating the drums of the details because so often it takes a little while for you to really figure out you have to meditate some you have to become sensitive to who you are and most of all you have to recognize what your emotions are and you have to recognize when you are feeling an emotion that doesn't feel wonderful someone said to us one day many years ago we were trying to prime their pump a little bit and we asked them what they wanted and they couldn't identify anything so we said well do you want such and such and she said oh I don't want that I've already got that and what she was speaking which represented what a lot of people are feeling is that a desire is something that you keep in place for the unfulfilled things that if it's already happened then it isn't a desire and we want you to understand that what pure desire is this is the definition of pure desire complete alignment with the furthest most expansion that you have accomplished so pure desire is you being in full sync with who you are and we promise you you'll never not want that you were born to be it and everything that surrounds you is all about that but it is helpful not to pick up the stick that has what is wanted on one end and the absence of it on the other and focus on the absence of the desire so will those two places lead me to the same place are we essentially saying the same thing that the wantingness to be more focus on the positive aspects as opposed to focusing neither on the desire or the let's take those exact words the wantingness to become more first we want to say that more is the mantra of all that we are but at the same time often when you say I want to be more you're focused upon what you are not yet it's a subtle sounding difference but it makes all the difference in the world more is inevitable more is a given more is the expanding universe more is essential to the eternalness that we all are this universe has expanded in just this little bit of time that we've been conversing here it has become more as a result of this conversation so more is inevitable but when someone says I seek more sometimes what they're saying is I'm not satisfied with what is and that is like shooting yourself in the foot that is activating the vibration that doesn't allow you in this moment to realize the more that you have already vibrationally become it's the reason that we broke the creative process down into steps step one is you're asking well when you're asking you're almost always aware of what you don't want as you're asking for what you do want in fact there's so often a vibration of what is not wanted in that asking but still out of knowing what you don't want there is an understanding of what is wanted and source runs with that but often in the early stages of a desire you are not a vibrational match to it you're usually in contradicted energy to it because you're aware of what is you're aware of the absence of what you want you want it to be better you want more some people came to us early in Jerry and Esther's experience and they had a mantra that they were offering that was better and better better and better better and better 
and they wanted to know what we thought about their mantra and we said the mantra in and of itself is a perfect mantra because it speaks to the eternal unfolding that we are all about but what we feel when you say it when you specifically are saying it is better than this better than this better than this better than this and so this kept being dominant so this was sticking the stick in the wheel because better and better was happening but better than this better than this better than this so good discussion yes 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 is it okay then to continue that practice of as desires come to let them come and go and still remain in that place of feeling source, feeling presence. Of course it is. Everything okay. is all right. There isn't anything vibrationally off about that. Okay. But let's clarify something. This is what you're looking for. So sometimes we know you have a hard time figuring out what it is we're asking of you because we say you create your own reality. And then we say you've already done step one and source has already done step two. So your step is just to chill out and let it be. And you say, well, where's the deliberateness in that? Shouldn't I be thinking about it more? So we give you processes that you ask for. We teach you how to script, which is tell the story the way you want it to be. We teach you to be as specific as you can be and still feel good talking about what you want. And so it must feel confusing. Which is it, Abraham? Do I just chill and let it be? Yeah. Or do I guide it with the specifics of my mind? Do I set goals? Do I be deliberate or do I allow? Make up your mind, you silly ghost. Which is it? So we want to explain to you that when you understand the way it all fits together, then you can more clearly understand where you are standing within that in any moment in time. So here's what we mean by that. So let's say that life has touched you in some way bothered you a lot and caused you to launch a specific rocket of desire about something but you're not a vibrational match to it you were sort of prodded into your awareness that it could be a whole lot better and you do prefer this so you've launched it but you're not a match to it not even close to a match to it yet so even the idea of the desire irritates you because you want something that you see no way to but then you hear us say step one step two step three we say chill out meditate trust have faith it's a done deal don't get in the way of it and so you do that you don't beat the drum of what isn't happening you distract yourself and focus on other things that are working out and you cease the opposing vibration Ooh. Now that you cease the opposing vibration, you are now one of the cooperative components that law of attraction is calling into fruition, into further clarity. So you begin having ideas. Ideas begin to occur to you because you begin translating the vibration of this vibrational reality into something that is manifested like a thought manifested like an emotion well now you're beginning to roll now you're not resistant at least in this moment that we are describing so now now is a good time for you to imagine it the way you want it to be to think about how it will feel to describe it with more detail if you can to sort of milk the vibration of it and what you're really doing you're practicing the vibration of your pure desire when it feels good like that you are no longer practicing the absence of it you're practicing the vibration of your pure desire well your desire has a life of its own it has a point of attraction and it's being tended by your inner being by the source within you so as you talk it up with more detail what you're actually doing is practicing the vibration of what source already has going on it's you getting in sync with your own desire it's you coming into alignment with something that you gave birth to you see 
It's so delicious. Once you begin to get the hang of that, you can feel, oh, it's too soon for me to talk about it because I'm not yet a vibrational match to it. What do you mean? I'm more actively aware of its absence than I am its presence. So if I talk about it right now, I'm going to do detriment to it rather than benefit to it because my active vibration is more about what isn't happening than about what is happening. Now, others might say, oh, you got to talk about it. If you're not talking about it, then you don't care about it. And it isn't that at all. You do care about it. That's why you are not shooting yourself in the foot by introducing resistance that has been practiced. Because once you launch it, it's our promise. It will grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And as long as you are in a place of non-resistance, the ideas will begin to flow. Now, the more recent way that we've been describing that same thing is that You've created the vibrational version of it. It exists in this vibrational reality. We call that that vortex. We wrote a whole book about your vortex where everything that you want and all that you have evolved to now stands. So here's this vibrational reality. And here you stand always in some relationship to that vibrational reality. And you can tell when you're close to it vibrationally. Now what happens is the vibrational frequency of that vibrational reality is now perceivable by you it's perceptible by you it's receivable by you it's translatable by you you begin getting glimpses of it you begin feeling of it that's what that feeling of inspiration is that's what that feeling of passion is so when you have those feelings you're right there you're in vibrational sync with it let your mind go as far as it wants to go We've been calling that the receiving mode. And it really is that because what you've asked for is all ripe and broadcasting. And if you're not doing that thing you do, that's holding you in a different frequency, then you can hear it. You can feel it. And oh, don't you love it when you get on a roll like that? Can't you just feel it when you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on? And it seems that everything in the universe is just opening and yielding to you. And you're going along and going along and going along and going along. And you're just sure that you're on your way to everything you want. You're going, going, going. And then all of a sudden it sort of stops and you say, wow, what happened? What happened? I thought I was going to go all the way over the edge with this one. I thought this was going to be the, f and we say, what happened is you were able to feel how much allowance you had already practiced and how far your allowance would take you. And then you came up against some, not so much allowance, which now you can begin to work on which means withdraw your attention from it which in your last teaching said don't want it anymore and we say those aren't the right words because you can't not want it you do want it you're not ever going to stop wanting it just don't try to keep it active in your mind when what's active in your mind is working against you instead of for you that makes sense thank you really really good yeah. really really good So what just happened there was leading edge conversation where together we took thought to a place that it has never been before. And every one of you went right there with us. Did you recognize it? Because you understand law of attraction. You understand your emotions. You understand the vortex. You understand vibrational frequencies. You got that. You're going to understand your emotions now. So when you feel a little negative emotion, what does that mean? I need to push through with this. No, back away. I need to back off. It's time to chill. It's time to cool my jets. It's time to just be easy. It's time to go general. It's time to be less specific and go more general by saying things like things are always working out for me. This is unfolding perfectly. Jerry used to say, let's just sit tight. Let's just sit tight. And what he meant was, please, Esther, please, I'm begging you stop talking about this. <laughs> now what? Uh, 